All right, guys, I'm very excited today to show you how Puppeteer works and how you can use it to generate a pre-rendered content on a single page application. So uh, also known as server-side rendering. Server-side rendering has been the topic for the past few years is that when you have a single page app, usually when you right click the page and view source, you probably see a pretty empty HTML document. But with server-side render, you're able to render the actual content that was going to be generated by the client-side JavaScript on the server. This way, the page will speed up a lot faster and the content of your, of your page generates already like by the time it reaches to the user. So today I want to show you how you can use Puppeteer to render server-side uh, on your single page application along with Express. So let's get started. So here I have a project that I generated with uh, Express Generator. If you don't have Express Generator, Generator, I suggest you do npm install-g Express Generator at 4. This will install the version 4 of Express Generator to your global command. Then to generate a project, all you have to do is do express, SSR, express. So that's uh, what I did for my, for my project. And it generates this folder here, right? So this folder here is the basic bare bone express application. All the code here are pre-written for you, so you don't really have to do much. So what we're trying to do is to have a static page on the site that has client-side JavaScript running. So to do that, we have to, we have uh, Express set up for a static pathing here with the public folder. So if I go to here and then go to routes, sorry, go to public folder, there should all of these should be publicly served. So let's create a new file here called comments.html. So here we were just gonna be creating a basic HTML page. And alongside the HTML body, we're gonna have a script tag where we write the client-side JavaScript. So in the body, what we have to all we have here it's a uh, pretty much a UL container, and then we'll give it a class of comments list. So here we have a very basic page. Let's test if this is working, right? So if I do alerts. Hi, and then if I start up the server, HTTP uh, errors. Okay, let's in npm install. Oh, because I forgot to in npm install. So once the Express Generator creates a project for you, you have to run npm install to install the modules. So for now, if I do npm start, it should start a server at port 3000. So let's go there. And the main page should be give you a basic welcome express. So if I go to comments.html in this path, I should see that my JavaScript will be rendered. See, it says hi here. So we know this is working. So let's get started on something. So I want to create a basic HTML document that gets a set of comments from a job for, from a uh, API endpoint, right? To do this, I want to use this thing called JSON placeholder. It's a really cool API placeholder for fake API responses. So I can simply query uh, an endpoint and then it will give me what I need. So let me just copy this endpoint here. So if you go here, it will give you a um, JSON response, right? Like if I go here, go to a new tab and open this, it returns a JSON response. So it's very useful when you're testing a specific uh, code and you want to use a uh, API endpoint as a test. So for us, we're just going to start with a self-generating, self-executing function. Since we're running this on a browser uh, on the latest Chrome, we should have all the latest uh, ES6 or ES7 uh, syntax. So let's start with a basic function and we're going to make it async because we're going to make a uh, a call to the server side and we're gonna make a fetch call so we want to use async and let's do this and have it execute 
So if we wrap the whole thing in async, we're able to do, uh, let's create a function called get comments. And get comments, it's a very simple function that returns a list of comments from the fetch API that we use. So remember the, the URL we pasted? So let's change that to comments. This will return us like 100 comments from the server. They're basically fake responses. So and then we need to process the response. All right, so we get the JSON results. And that's it. That's a, that function will get the comments for me. So now I want to have a uh, variable. Equals get await. By the way, if you guys are not familiar with async await, I have a video on my channel explaining how you can use it. It's awesome. So here we're just getting all the comments. And now I want to create a function that renders the comments into the comments list container. So we want to get the container first. Documents dot query selector and we want comments list. So I want to create a function called render comments and it takes the uh, two parameters, the actual data and then the container you want to render this to. So let's create this function. Render comments and then it takes comments and then the container render this into so this function is very simple. Uh, we want to loop through a list of comments and then signify them into a, uh, a single HTML output string. So to do this, let's start a comments list HTML. Set that to empty string initially. And then for each comment, we're just going to loop through it. And then we just need to update the comments list HTML value with a HTML. So in this case, I just want to render some basic things. So let's like take a look at how uh, this API looks like. So I see it has a name and an email and a body. So we're just going to do, how about just name column the body? So name, and then column, and then their comments. All right, and then we end the line here. And that's it. So now the last thing we need to do is to put the content into the container. Once we string, we also created a list uh, string of all the results. We just need to do container dot inner HTML equals comments list HTML. So this should work. And if I go here to the comments endpoints, as you can see, we have who. Something's not right. ID. Uh, oh yeah, I had two dollar sign here. So this will create. Yeah, the, so the name is here, and then uh, they have weird names here in the API. But uh, I'm, actually, let me just use email. And then I want to just bold it so you can see who wrote what. All right, so this is like a page with like 100, 200 comments on it. And this is based on a client-side generated JavaScript. So if I view source here, as you can see, it's nothing here, it's empty. So this is not good for uh, SEO or like for the other crawlers to find the content of your page because all they can see is this JavaScript. And we generate the content via the JavaScript on the client side. So our goal here is to get all of this to display within the page without having us to do much. Just have a, a, 
what the, the magic comes from this module called Puppeteer. So I'll explain how this works. Our goal is to generate a list of comments in here on the server side. So when you view source, you can see all the comments there. And so were all the crawlers. So the magic is something called Puppeteer. Let me install the module. This is a module from Google. And it's what they use to render the page on the server side dynamically. So it will crawl the page and it's pretty much a headless Chrome browser. And what it sees, it's pretty much what Chrome sees. So in the end, what our strategy is to have it crawl the page and then save what it sees in the, on the page. And then we're going to copy what it sees into a variable and then have Express render that variable to us. I know it's a little bit too much, but uh, I want to show you how, how we can use this, right? So on the, we, we need to create a library function, sort of like a helper function called ssr.js. So this is a very handy uh, function that generates the page in a server side after it crawls it. So since I, I pretty previously written this already, and I got this information from Google, so you can feel free to search for the API on how to use Puppeteer on the Google's website. And for now, I just want for demonstration purposes, I just want to show you how you can do this. So here, here's the code. We bring in Puppeteer and we have an async function called SSR. Remember, you have to make everything async in this function because everything is a call to the external endpoint. So here we're just saying, hey, we were rendering the page in SSR mode. And we launch a browser, a headless browser, by using this statement. And then we wait for the page to, to load. And then here in the try catch, we're doing a, we're telling Puppeteer to go to this URL, whatever is specified by the server. And then you wait until the network is done. What this means is that it will wait until there are no more new things loaded to the page for like 500 milliseconds or something. Um, basically, it waits for all the scripts to load. And then we wait for a selector. So on the page, it looks for this selector. It needs to wait for this selector to load on the page. Then it does its crawling. So if not, we're just going to say, all right, there's something error. It timed out. And then here, we, we wait for the page content to load. So basically, it looks for the whole page and then look for all of this stuff to get loaded out. It runs all the JavaScript on the page as well. So by the time it's done, all of this will be loaded on the page. And Google's headless browser sees all of that. And then we close the browser. And then all we have to do is return the actual HTML to the user, to the page. So what Google will see is all the HTML on this page. And then it puts it in a variable called HTML. Easy, right? And that's what all this function does. So for us, all we have to do is to bring in the SSR function. So let me say, so SSR exports the whole function, helper function to the user. So once we export, imported the SSR function, in uh, Express, all we have to do is set up a, uh, an, a, uh, a route, right? So let me do app.use comments. So if I set up this route, I want to make it async mode. We request results. And then we are going to have SSR return us the page. So the magic is this one simple line here. So HTML is, we have to use await because it, uh, that function is an async function. We call the SSR function and then we pass it the request protocol and then the request uh, get the host. This is just to emulate what the user is passing to us. And then we just proxy, pretty much you could think of this as proxying the page.
page to comments.html. So, and then we just return 200 status with the actual HTML content generated by Puppeteer. So what is going on here? Basically, when you, the person goes to slash comment on our server, we remember what the protocol they were, whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, and then we go to the site's name, in our case it's localhost, and then we use we have express return whatever it's in the content of comments.html. So this whole link here is passed into SSR function. SSR function basically cross this page here, right, in the background, cross this page, gets all run to JavaScript and sees all of this content and then put the result in a variable and returns to the user. So now if I start the server, seems like something's not wrong. App that user is not a function. Seems like I have some error here. Oh, sorry, it should be app.use. Okay, now if I do npm start, and now if I go to comment, remember this is the, the endpoint that uh, Express, that we tell Express to do. So if I go here, it will render the page in the SSR mode and then returns the result for us. It seems to be uh, taking a bit. I think we had to make sure that comments list is available, which is this class here. Let me see what's going on. Can start. Oh, so it should be comments. So it needs to look for comments HTML. So if I go to comments. It seems like it's not finding the page because uh, let me restart it because uh, I updated the variable. So if I go to, let's try it again. There you go. So now this page looks exactly like what it was before, right? Now the magic is when you right click and view source, you're going to see all this content on the page right here. Remember previously, all of this is empty because all it is on the page is a piece of JavaScript on the end that renders these. But now you get all of this on the server side. And imagine how fast this is for a user if you have a page with heavy JavaScript executing and the content is undiscoverable by search engines. Now everything is discoverable because you use Puppeteer to render your page. Amazing, right? I highly recommend you to look more into Puppeteer because it it does not just that, but it can uh, generate screenshots with PDF version, uh, a lot, it could do user testing. So I plan to do more tutorials in the future for Puppeteer, but this is a start for now. And I hope you find this tutorial useful and let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.